Judges chapter 19. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel. Again, the king is supposed to be God. There's no rulership. And there is no man authority. It's a reckless time in the book of Judges. And we'll see it more so in chapter 19. That there was a certain Levite. When the Bible says certain, as you know, it's one particular. It's not a parable. It's not a story. It's true. So journeying on the side of Mount Ephraim. That's the trouble where Ephraim, previous chapters. Who took him a concubine. Now that's a wife. And let me just run the passages for that. We won't look at them, but um, Leviticus 21, 1 through 15. Genesis 22, 24, 11, 29, and 35, 22. It's a half wife. She's a wife, but she's not a wife, but she's a wife, according to the scripture. Bethlehem, Judea, that's where Jesus is born. That's where David's born. And his concubine played the whore. Now remember, this is a Levite. He has married a woman. Leviticus 21. Leviticus 21. Verse 7. Leviticus 21, verse 7. The laws of the priest's wife. They shall not take a wife that's a whore or profane. Now, this woman wasn't, but she's going to be. Neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband. For he, the priest, is holy unto his God. Verse 9. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father. She shall be burnt with fire. So there's a restriction on the wife and children, daughters. Now, we're going to assume that this, this woman, I mean, she hasn't done wrong before the marriage, but she's going to do wrong after the marriage. Again, a concubine is a wife. So, she plays the whore. Now, that's a violation of Leviticus 21. And went away from him, she leaves him, unto her father's house, to Bethlehem, Judah. And was there four whole months. So she leaves and goes back to her father's house. No reason why. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again. Well, that's a violation of Leviticus 21. If she's played the whore. Having his servant with him. I don't know if that's a witness or somebody to be a comfort to him. And a couple of asses. Now it's remarkable how asses show up in the Bible. There was no need to mention that. And yet they show up. And she brought. Okay, just stick And she brought him into her father's house. Well, at least she welcomed him. I mean, there's no uh, arguments. There's no fighting. There's, there's no uh, wrath between them. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. So there's no hostilities here. Oh, how you doing? And his father-in-law... Still called father-in-law. The damsel's father retained him, and he bowled with him three days, so they did eat and drink and lodge there. And it came to pass on that fourth day, when they rose early in the morning, they rose up to depart, and the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and afterwards go your way. And they sat down and did eat and drink both of them together. For the damsel's father has said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, 
and tarry all night and let thy heart be merry. All right, he's leaving in the morning. They, they sit down. They have a meal. They're, they're talking. They're having a good time together. Nighttime's called. It's too late for you to leave. Stay here. No hostilities. There is fellowshipping going on. And when the men rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him. Therefore he lodged there again. And rose up early in the morning on the fifth day to depart. And the damsel's father said, Comfort thy heart, I pray thee. And they tarried unto afternoon. That's the first and last time afternoon shows up in the Bible. And did eat both of them. I got John 4.18. Let's see what that is. John 4.18. That's the woman at the well, I believe. John 4.18, let's see. For thou hast five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, and thou hast said truly. Well, she, she played a whore, she's got multiple husbands. It doesn't say, you know, with the whoredom, was it one man, two men, three men? What's she doing back at her father's house? What's going on? You know, that's it. She, we're told she played the whore, she left, she's at her father's house. Here her husband's at her father's house, and they're having a good time. There's no rebuking. In verse 9, when the man rose up to the park, he and his concubine, now he's going to take her, and his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father said unto him, Behold, now the day draweth toward the evening. Another, another day is past. I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to the end. Lodge here, that thy heart may be merry. Well, we've been doing this all along, and I haven't left yet. And tomorrow get you early, early on your way that thou mayest go home. Well, we tried that the day before and it didn't work. But the man would not tarry that night. But he arose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. So he's going through Benjamin. Benjamin, where Jerusalem is, Jebus, that's Benjamin's area, which is in Judah. And there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine also was with him. So he takes the woman, his wife. He takes his servant, his asses. He's gone. Night is coming. And when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto the master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn into the city of the Jebusites. And lodge in it. Now God said the Jebusites were to be killed. They're gone. They're, they're, they're wicked. They're vile. Have no dealings with them. And this master said, and We will not turn aside hither unto the city of a stranger. Gentiles. The city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. So Jebus is still out of the hands of Benjamin. It's still a Gentile nation. It has not been conquered yet. It does not become Jerusalem, does not become property officially, documentary of the Bible until the time of David, when Joab goes in there and conquers Jebus. And he said unto his servant, Come, and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibba or Ramah. Those are Jewish areas. And they passed on and went their way. And the sun went down upon them. It's dark. When they were by Gibna, which belonged to Benjamin. Alright, so here it's of the tribe of Israel, it's the tribe of Benjamin. That would be Jacob's last son. The last son of Rachel. Rachel dies by giving birth to Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and lodge and give them. And when he went in, into the city, city gates, he sat him down in the street of the city. So he walks in, and here's the street, and sits down. For there was no man that took them into a house to lodge. And no, he walks in there, and whether the streets are empty, no one's out, you know, it's, it's, it's dinner time, it's getting late, we, we belong home. Or people are just passing by, and uh, here comes a stranger, who cares? 
That's not what the law said to do. The law said you are to take care of your brethren. And here's a guy that's a Levite in a Benjaminite city, and he has a place of need to be and food and to be taken care of. And the Benjamites are like, let him go. Let him be. Especially a priest. I mean, you want approval of a God. <laughs> you find you're a Levite, take care of him. Like today, I mean, if you want a blessing today, you find out a guy is a Jew, man. You help him, take care of him, show him Christ. Don't do anything wrong against him. Don't curse him. Don't do anything. Because the Bible goes, I bless him that bless me. I curse him that curse me. But here's a Levite. And if you want a greater Old Testament blessing by God, it would be take care of this Levite. Now, he's not going to have a sign on and say, I'm a Levite. You would have to address a conversation with him and get to know him. And behold, there came an old man, old, set in the old ways. He knows what used to be. He's not new. He's not to the new way. From his work out of the field. So he's out working in the field. Sun come down, time to come out of the field. At even, that's past six. Which was also of the Mount Ephraim. So he's in Benjamin. These two are from Mount Ephraim. So they know each other. Or heard of each other. And he's sojourning Gibna. So he's left Mount Ephraim. Would we'll probably assume he's an Ephraimite. In Benjamin. Man, you see what the Jews are moving all over the place. They're not staying in their boundaries. They're not staying with their families. They're moving on. Ephraim has joined the idols, let them alone. Maybe this is why this guy left Ephraim. And then he has a Levite come to him. Maybe that's of God. But the men of the place were Benjamin. Benjaminites. So see, the Holy Spirit tells us that guy, that old man, is not a Benjaminite. But he's in Benjamin. And when he had lifted up his eyes and saw a wayfaring, traveling man... In the street of the city, and the old man said, Whither goest thou? And whence comest thou? Now, how big is this city that only one man will talk to this guy? The Holy Spirit reports. One man coming from working all day and all into the night, on his way home, stops off and said, Hey, how you doing? Where are you going? What's your duty? He's like a He's just so turned off. Easy. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yep. And the thing is, it's just so sorry. You know, America, we're going to see America here. But what's the thing that America has given? America has given it to the hotel motel industry. I'm not going to take you in my house. Go, go pay for a motel or hotel. We don't help each other. And we're in the day and age today. You wouldn't dare bite anybody into your house you didn't know. I mean, I got to admit, there have been times in my life, very few, but I'm picking up a hitchhiker. Seen people with a gas can. I, I, I don't do it much. I'd be afraid to today. You don't know who you are. And there are people out there who will act like they ran out of gas just to get in your car and take over you. But this is not like the times, but these are the times. These times right here in Judges 19, the same times in America, it's lawlessness. There's no authority. America has authority in the White House, and even Christians complain about it. So he, he gazed into the conversation with them. And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, where he was, to, toward the side of Mount Ephraim, and thence I am I. That's where I'm that's where I live. And I went to Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Judah. But I am now going to the house of the Lord, Shiloh. And there is no man that receiveth me death. Alright, this is where I live, Mount Ephraim. That rung a bell in the guy's head, because that's where he's from. We came from Bethlehem, Judah. And now we're going to the Lord. I'm on my way to where the tabernacle is, in Shiloh. And that's where it is. 
He's going to go pay his vows. He's going to go do the service of the Lord at Shiloh. He wants to do right. Yet there is both straw and provender, it's food, provisions, for our asses. Now the Levite has right there with his asses, he's got food for the animals and he's got food for the people. So the food's taken care of. And there is bread and wine also with me. So we can feed the people, we can feed the animals. And for thy handmaid, that's the, his wife. And for the young man, which is with thy servants, there is no want of anything. Huh? You need a place to lay down. <laughs> That's the only thing. A bed would be nice. But Jacob slept on the ground with a rock as his pillow. The old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever let all thy wants lay upon me. Only lodge not in the street. Come into my house. I'll take care of you. No one else has made that offering to him. So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet. Oh, yeah, he's taking care of them, washing their feet. Hospitality. I mean, you ain't get this kind of service at a hotel. And did eat and drink. So they're feasting, they're dining, the animals are given a place, the animals are being fed, they're sitting down, they're not in the street no more, their feet have been washed. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, 2 Corinthians 6.15. 2nd Corinthians 6.15 Now these Belial are wicked Unclean Filthy Sinners Wicked 2nd Corinthians 6.15 In what concord First and last time that shows up Have Christ with Belial So here's the comparison Here is Jesus Christ the Holy the great. What's on the other side of Jesus Christ? Belial. That's how wicked these people are. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 the greatest ever to be, holiness to be, Jesus Christ. On the scale of 10, the sewer, the wickedness, the vileness, be Belial. Unbelievers. So there are certain sons of these Belial people. And they would probably show some Belialness of themselves. There are Belial people in America. And they got sons. Beset. That's the first time that word shows up in the Bible. The house round about. They encircle this guy's house. So there's more than just two, three, four of them. They've surrounded the house. Now you would find in, in stories and television that it would be the cops. We got the place surrounded. Come out with your hands up. But here in this time in Book of Judges, here are the outlaws, the wicked doers that are vile. Here they surrounded this house of this old man who has some good in him. To take care of a stranger. And then the story begins in verse 22. It's a lot like Lot entertaining the two angels. Yeah, we're we're going to get there. And so let me close this verse. So keep your place in, in Genesis 19. So the story begins. Here's this guy. He takes someone in. And gives them a place to eat and to sleep. And then here comes these people, and how does the Holy Spirit open up? They're wicked. And scripture with scripture, they're not like Christ. They beset the house round about and beat at the door. Not 
I mean, I, I would even think they'd have some kind of battering ram or something. Beat at the door. And spake to the master of the house. That's the old man. The old man. They show no respect for an old elderly person. Where have you seen that? We're in America in Judges. Saying, now these are the wicked ones. Bring forth the man. Now look, it says certain sons of it. What, what classification is a son? I know this is a hard question for America. Male. It's a male. Bring the man. Now, what's the classification of the sexual identity of a man? It's a male. The males want the male. Now, that man went into the house with a woman who is enough to play a whore, which was she would have some kind of beauty, some kind of uh, aspects of her that people would want to pay for the pleasure, trying to be clean. And that she was married to a Levite. They know that this guy goes walking into this man's house. They know there's a woman. And when you got a man, a servant that's a man, an old man that's a man, and a woman, three men to one woman, and they come banging on the door saying, we want the man. That came into thy house. So they watched that man go into the house. Well, like you said, it was only six o'clock in the evening. I'm sure there are people, a lot of people in that square walking oh, yeah. around doing yeah. their business after work. And that we may know him. How do you do? Absolutely not. No. So let's go over, like my wife said, Genesis 19. I remember this is the Benjaminites. And let's see, verse five I got. Verse four will start. Nineteen four. Well, in two is where they wash their feet, which would coincide with right, verse yeah, two. one. Right, two. Verse one. Verse one. And there came two angels, the Levite and the servant, that's interesting, just realize that there, to Sodom at evening, <laughs> that's the same time frame, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, Lot was at work like the old man was at work, oh, this is interesting, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, just like the the old man, and he bowed him, he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, Oriental jester, and he said, "Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, like the old man said, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go your ways." That's what the father-in-law. I mean, that's what the guy kept trying to get away from his father. You don't wonder if the father-in-law did keep him so long if this would even happen yeah. and they said nay but we will abide in the street all night and he pressed them greatly and they turned in unto him and entered his house and he made them a feast and did bake that's the first time that showed up bake unleavened bread and in verse 2 early is the first time that word showed up and abide First time those two words show up. The lot was the first early abider. And he did bake unleavened bread. Well, Lot knew what kind of bread to make. Didn't that much. And they did eat. Like they ate at the house. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of the city, men, that's a male. men of the city I'm just gonna say for the for the sake of the study they got a penis 
men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed. That's the first time that word show up. That means in circle. And over here in Judges, what was the word they use? Roundabout. Wow. You know, the Levites were, were to preach the scriptures as they were to be. Like the church is not preaching the Bible. Compass the house roundabout. Or round, uh, compass the house round. Judges says roundabout. Both the young, I mean, excuse me, but old and young. These are the men of Sodom. They're old and they're young. All the people from every quarter. The guy who's laying underneath the bridge to the higher up. The elite class of people. And they called unto Lot. Lot! And said unto him, Where are the men males? All right, there were no females in this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't even know their home there. They know that water has water. Yeah. yeah, but this night they come for the man. And notice it says in verse 1, two angels, and then they say, where are the men? <laughs> yeah. How's that one? Angels are men. Men are angels. Which came into the this night. So like the book of Judges, they are watching. Strangers are in town. Ooh. Let's take a look at something over here. Uh, Genesis. Keep your finger in, in where we are. Your third finger. I hate to do this. But Genesis chapter. S oh, that's not where it is. It's in. That's in Jude. Where it says stream. All right. We're back to Genesis 19. Where are the men which came unto thee this night? So they're watching. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And that's not how they do. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. Not going to allow him in. He closed the door. And said, I pray you, brethren, oh, Lot, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. They're virgins. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. You can't have the men but here are my daughters. And they said, Stand back. They said again, this one fellow, Lot, came in to sojourn, but he stayed. And he will needs to be a judge. That's what he was doing at the lot at the gate. He's a judge. Now will we deal, that's the first time that shows up. Worse with thee than with them. Ooh, we, we're gonna entertain our sexual pleasures on them. Ooh, we're going to do it unto you, brother. You're out here all by yourself. We're going to play prison house. And we're in the shower. We can't have those two men. We'll take you, Lot. That means they've been eyeing Lot. That's perversion. And they press sore upon the man. Even Lot. And came near to break the door. No, they're going to bust that door down to get those two men to have their sexual ways. That's yet to come in America. Remember Lot's wife as the days of Lot? But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. The angels grabbed him, get in here. And the angels, they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. That's the first time that shows up. Blindness is a representation of sodomites who want to have their way with another man. By angels. Both small and great, so that they wearied 
themselves to find the door. And what happened is the angels blind them. They can't see, so they're feeling for that doorknob. They still want their sexual pleasures with the men. Even at the, at the blindness. There's no, oh, I can't see. Oh, my God, help me. No, no. Oh, I can't see. Where's that door? Oh, where's that door? Back to Judges. And it's weird in Judges 19, we've got the same story in Jewish, the book of Moses, and Genesis. And the parallel is the 19th chapter, Holy Spirit working there. Oh, I didn't even realize that either. Yeah, 1919. Here, I got the notes right here, and there you saw that. It's amazing. And no one ever at this point in Judges 19 said, this sounds, how come, you know, we study Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, chapter. We study the Bible. We've gone already through it once, chapter by chapter. And it's amazing that no one, especially the disciples, they never just like, wait a minute, stop, guys. Stop. I read this somewhere. Amen. Especially the disciples, wait a minute, stop. Jesus, come here. Stop, Jesus. Leave the multitudes on the this has happened somewhere before. Now you're God, you're the Word of God, will you show us? And that's all it would take. Now this Levite, who's supposed to be with the scribes and know the scriptures, uh-oh. Now he wouldn't have said Genesis 19 because there was no chapter. But this order came into mind. Mm -hmm. So... At the end of 22, we may know him. But it's funny how it's the same words. What does that word mean? Let's go to Genesis chapter 4. Scripture with scripture. We don't need a dictionary. Genesis 4 1. Keep your place in Genesis 4 1. Let's go over to Genesis 2. Oh, where? 2. 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from, from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And then you got Genesis chapter 3, the fall, correct? Adam and Eve are standing there. So Genesis 4 1, and Adam knew Eve. This is not the time where, oh, how you doing, woman? <laughs> that was back in chapter 2, where they shook hands and God went off kind of like a give you because here's two men and women. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. Oh, look at this. That's the first time conceived shows up. And bear Cain. That's the first time bear showed up. Adam knowing Eve produces a conceivement, which produces a pregnancy, and she bore a child. That knew is the same new over here in Gen Judges 19, verse 22, and Genesis 19, that we want to have sex. Us males want to have sex with those males that came into your house. That's sodomy. In blindness, we're going to try to find that door. They're over here ready to beat the door down. And if the Lord tarries, this is going to happen in America. And it may happen, not in people inviting people into your houses, but may happen at hotels and motels, which I probably guarantee it does, especially in the worst sections of hotels and inns and motels in the bad sections of cities and of America. Grabbing people off the street. Grabbing people off the street. Who are travelers, especially in, in cities you hear stories about in Detroit and Cleveland and all that. A family accidentally ends up in their bad section of the city and they're drug out of the car. You want to read America in the Bible? Don't go to the New Testament. Stay in, in the Old Testament. The book of Judges describes America. And when you get to 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles, as God will pronounce judgment upon his own people, the people that are blessed of all the earth, and God destroys Judah and destroys his temple in Judah because of the wickedness of sins. They got churches on every street corner in Judah. 
And if God don't judge America like he judged Judah, he has to apologize to every wicked Judean of the Old Testament in the times of Jeremiah, and God ain't going to apologize for that. You would not think you would see in America what we're reading happening today. And we're not done yet with this guy. Well, I'll make more comments that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, that's the old man, the old man, went out unto them, like Lot did, and said unto them, Nay, my brother, my brethren, he's not Benjamin. Yeah, but he's a jerk. And still, Lot was in the Sodom. I mean, Sodomite as a resident of Sodom. Look how they both had the same words. My brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. He's telling us that their sexual pleasure is wickedness. There it is. It's not the men wanting to know the girl. It's the men wanting to know the men. Seeing that this man is come into my house, do not... That's the same words. Of, it's almost like they got Genesis 19. They're reading it. How's that for a script? God will give you a script when you need a script. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, a virgin, like Lot's two girls, and his concubine. Lot said, here's my two daughters. This guy said, here's two women. Isn't that a quinty dinky? Two male angels, two males here, the man and his servant. Wow. And then again, the top of all, like my wife said, Judges 19, Genesis 19. History will repeat itself. And if you don't study history, you're not going to know what happened. It's already happened. Nothing new is, under, is new under the sun as Solomon, the wisest man ever, out of the Bible. And if you were to take the Bible... And go through the Bible in the public school system. When you get to Judges 19 and you've done Genesis 19, you can teach the class the vile and wickedness of sodomy. And you're going to have to maybe get a weapon if this is going to happen. And I'm not one for weapons. I've got a taser. And these gentlemen want to come try something like that. i got a taser for a good spot. Wildness and wickedness. Behold, here's my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Then will I bring out now, and humble ye then, humble ye them? That's a wrong choice of words. And do with them what seemeth good unto you, what Lot said. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. Boy, he's really, what you guys are, he's preaching to these men at the door. You're wickedness. You're vile. Well, so is offering your daughter. Deuteronomy 21, 14. I read somewhere one time, Deuteronomy 21, 14. And I kind of bought into it well, and I started think, thinking, somebody, I don't know who it was, you know who you are, or whatever, that this was a, a, a custom oriental gesture of protecting the people in your house. I'm like, I got to think about that. That's just a rotten father. In 21, 14, they shall be if thou hast not delight in her, and thou shalt let her go, whether she will, but thou shalt not sell her for all money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her, because thou hast humbled her. I mean, here you're taking up your wife and you're selling her. You don't like her. Here, you, she's going to go for the higher bid. Or, you know, go out and go out in the street and 
bring home money sexually. That's what the guy's wife was. She was a whore. Here there are two fathers, two different books, same chapter, and they are offering their daughters to a bunch of wicked, vile, from scale t 1 to 10, they are 1 compared to Jesus. I mean, they are 10 compared to 1 that Jesus is. Jesus is holy. He is wonderful. He's great. He's God. They are number 10. Here, take the females in my house and have your way. Now, I'm not talking about the sodomy yet. But let, let, let's say they were men that desire women. Can you imagine what they would have done with those women? Can you imagine what filthy, can you imagine what goes on filthiness today of, of a woman with a man who's just got a uh, sexual, perverted, billy isle perversion of sexual pleasure against his wife or another woman? Now, I've heard all kinds of stories. Burns. Torture. We're living in a day and age, just a few years, we're starting to find out that these women, there are women who are being held captive in men's basements. And they... Since they were teenagers. Since they were te and they can't, even the television programs that bring them up cannot tell you what actually happened. The TV says, that's too vile. I mean, I just read the other day, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I just read the other day that the sexual activity today includes a kissing where your roughness come out of your butt and looking at area. That's vile. That's wicked. That's perversion. That's Judges 19. A woman who, as a husband or a daughter of a man in the house, is supposed to feel secure and protected, that man will do whatever it takes. Dad is going to, my husband's going to protect me as much as he can. And if they get to us, he's dead. There has been story with the Nazis and the Jews that a, a father has been burned to Chris of his hand on a fire. that he will not turn and tell them where his family is. There has been torture for people who will not give in to the Catholic Church, uh, a Christian, of all kinds of inhumane tortures. And here we are. Inhumane. Inhumane. And in Genesis and Judges chapter 9, oh, you want these men? Here, take my, take my females. And do whatever you want. They've got a religion out there that they will take a female. I'm just going to say they circumcise them. What? They're no different from judges. Humiliation, pain, suffering. That's abuse. We're not done. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Then I will bring out, put, that bring out now... And humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. They did not want the women. Do you know how vile that is? Here, take my daughter and do whatever you want. Now, that's not an open license for any man with a sexual appetite, that these men said, no, we don't want the women. Are you really that deprived? Seriously? The men would not hearken to him, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. He grabs her and brings her out to them. Now, a lot different from the story of Lot, they knew her. Well, they did take the woman. Well, that tells you what they knew over here. They, they may know him. And they knew her. And all we're told is sons, plural. They call that in the, in the great sections of depravity, they call it a gang rape.
And they say that women, such case like that, who ends up getting, I don't know how it is, but multiple pre pregnancies from those men. Man, their children they produce is vile and wicked. And abused her. That's the first and last time abused is used in the Bible, and it's a reference to sex. And the Bible calls this abuse, this sexual abuse that is in the Bible, Judges 19, verse 25, in the man, he says, this is vile, this is wicked. And yet it was allowed by her husband. And I guarantee that in America and in the world, that has happened this week. It may happen today or tonight. It will probably happen before the week is over. And that's tomorrow. There are men in Asian countries that will sell their daughters so they can bring money into the house. Now I know, I wasn't there, but I know for a fact, a man stood in the crowd, raised his hand, asked a, a preacher a question, said, well, what about Judges 19? What can you give us from Ju Judges 19? And the preacher answered, the depravity of man without God. This is a man who, or men who will not let God rule their lives. And then you're going to turn around and say, our nation's okay. Everything's great. We're just wonderful. We're number one. They abused her all the night until the morning. No relief. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Notice how this is all happening in the middle of the night. America's up on that. They do it during the day, too. And the response, mostly stuff like that, but you get your, you get your phone and you take a selfie picture. Or you just completely... They say, listen, let me tell you, too, another thing. They tell you, if, you're go, if a woman, if you're being raped or going to be raped, don't yell rape. They won't come. They tell you, yell fire or something else to yell. I forget what that is. But yell fire. More people will come to a fire than they will come to a rape. That's a shame. This woman had no protection. I'm not talking about condoms. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. So she's even there before the sun comes up. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of her of the house. I was wondering where the old man went. And went out to go his way. He's going to Shiloh. Remember? He's going to Shiloh. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was falling down at the door of the house. And her hands were upon the threshold. 1 Samuel 5, 4. Now this has nothing to do with the story, but it's interesting. 1 Samuel 5, 4. There you go. 1 Thessalonians, I mean, why did I say that? 1 Samuel 5, 4. I don't know where that came from. And when he rose up early in the morning, on the morrow morning, Behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. That's where the, that's where the Levite was going to go. To Shiloh, where the ark of the Lord is. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. And only the stump of Dagon was left him. You know what he's going to do to his wife? He's going to cut her in pieces. And the reason why I say we're going to 1 Samuel 5, 4, I'm not going to make the connection, but do you see a connection there? There's something to that, and maybe Dagon's work, I don't know. But this happens much later on. Dagon getting cut. It's just, 
there's something to that and I, I'm not I, I don't know but that's as as much as this chapter parallels Genesis 19 so he gets up opens up the door and there's his wife on the ground passed out probably clothes or torn if there's any clothes at all bruised burned bleeding and he said unto her up and let us be going really but none answered then the man took her up upon his ass almost like the parable I mean not the, 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 the good Samaritan but this person is dead and the man rose up and got him unto his place. He didn't go to Shiloh. He went home. Should have went to Shiloh. Should have gone where God was for Israel. Just watch. And when he was come into his house, let's go back to verse 18. And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim, from thence I am. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but, not, but I am now going to the house of the Lord. I am going to Shiloh. Verse 29, he's going home. He took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into 12 pieces. Now I drew out, I can't figure out how he would equally divide a body in 12 pieces. Foot here, arm, but I mean, and sent her into all the coasts of Israel. Now, I get a cruel thing is when I go to the post office, whether I use the machine or I go up to the person, and I bring a package, they start, is there any firearms here? Is there any weapons? Is there any chemicals? Is there any animals? Is there anything alive? And I always think about this guy bringing these packages, 12 packages to the post office. with his wife's parts in there. This is a Levite that is not operating under God. This is a chapter of people not operating without God. This is a country called America that is not allowing God. It is the depravity of sinful man. And it was so that all that saw, all that saw it said, there was no such deed done, nor seen, from the day that the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it. Take advice. That's the first time advice shows up. I need some advice. Look at the. Look at the context of that word. Twelve groups of people get a package, they open it up, and there's a woman's body part there. And speak your minds. That man set those body parts that you probably did the heads of the tribes. He says, This is what they did to my wife. Well, then chop her up. Couldn't you send a better package? Really? You couldn't bury her in 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 a tomb and write sit down and write a letter and write it twelve times that this is what happened. You had to send your bloody dead wife, a Levite. You know what the law said about touching a dead body? Here's a Levite. 
Can you imagine him having to come to the priest, his own class of people, the children of Levi, and saying, I need the water of separation for what? I'm the one that sent my chopped up wife throughout all throughout of Israel. I touched a dead body, my wife. Everybody who received the package had to do it too. Oh, you mean when you picked her up and put her on your ass? No, when I chopped her up in 12 pieces and, like my wife just said, it sent it to 12 people who touched something unclean now. Remember the Bible says you're unclean even and you got to get the water separation? This priest has caused more business for the priest by this wickedness. He's defiled at least 12 others because of what he done. And you don't ever, ever again hear about that old man, what he. And you look at this story and say, my God, why is this story in a holy Bible? Because it's the depravity of unholy men. And if you think you're so good that you're going to go to heaven by your best man, you're just as filthy as this. And Jesus Christ answered the fact that every idle word. You're going to give an account thereof. If you look upon a woman that lusts after her in her eye, in your heart, you've already committed. You don't have to do the act. You've already, just your thoughts. And imagine, look at these people in this chapter. Look at these people that in Genesis 19. And the people in Judges 19 had no regard to what the book of Moses said in Genesis and there was no chapter 19, but for us, in Genesis 19, they had no regard to the story of Lot and his story. And I guarantee that story was known. This Levite should have known that story in Genesis. And why he went and cut his wife in different pieces. That makes it more vile. And we are in a nation... That is deprived of God. England, America, Europe, and the world are following. And if you knew what sexual sins go on every night where there's night on this planet, you would not believe. But if you read the Bible, yep, that's the property of man. Repent. Confess your sins. Get right with God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and forsake your sins. And we're not done. We got chapter 20. The nation of Israel is going to respond to their children, Benjamin. And they're going to have the nerve, the Lord willing, if we get to chapter 20, they're going to have the nerve to tell God what to do. And that's what people in America do today. God, you don't have a right to kill the children. Lord God, you don't have the right to have these volcanoes. Lord, you don't have the right to say, why, why did God kill all those children? Why did God do that? Who are you? Who are you? Are you on that one scale with Jesus Christ, holy, complete, and without sin? We're all sin. All have sin. All have come short of the glory of God. And some of our minds that we think are more vile than the actions of chapter 19. Even Christians. You ever think about killing your boss because you hate him? You're a murderer. You ever look at that woman passing by? You're an adulteress. What about all the idle words you speak? Oh, they're gonna be they're gonna be smoke detectors going off at the judgment seat of Christ. Every Christian is going to have to carry a broom and a dustpan to sweep up those ashes.